watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, good morning. Happening today, thousands and thousands of people expected to flood D.C. as the annual Cherry Blossom Festival gets underway. This is a look at the tidal basin yesterday where the beautiful trees already in peak bloom. It's going to be a very windy start to this year's festival as well. Jack, you'll have more on that coming up in just a moment. But first, it is 6 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. Good morning, Jim. Corey James Shanika. She's keeping an eye on the roads this morning. She's going to have more on that commute for you in just a second. Jackie's keeping an eye on the uh, forecast this morning. Mm -hmm. Things... Right now, not too bad, but later on could be uh, a little messy. Yes, exactly. Messy in the terms of the windiest day of the work week. We're going to be seeing some of those gusts in excess of 35 miles per hour closer towards D.C. But back over towards the mountains, that's where we could see those gusts up to 50 miles per hour. That's why a wind advisory has been issued. That goes into effect at 11 a.m. We'll continue through 8 p.m. later on this evening. Now, we also have that fire threat as well. That's for most of our, our Commonwealth areas. That's mainly for Central Virginia. It's so along as south as 66. That's where we could see uh, any fire that starts could spread quickly. Winds are not too bad right now. Sustained winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, mainly out of the west southwest gusts. Those are starting to pick up back over towards western Maryland, but really we'll start to notice those winds picking up later on this afternoon. We'll see those highs, though, back in the low 60s later on, but I'll more details on a cool down coming up. Shanika's back with the on and look at those roadways. How's traffic? All right, good morning. Well, unfortunately, you are seeing delays out there along the Capitol Beltway. This is heading southbound 495, the outer loop right out of Montgomery County. So this crash is right before the American Legion Bridge. So passing Clara Barton Parkway, you can see those flashing lights there to the right. That crash is taking at least one lane. Now let's flip over to the map so we can see the congestion you're dealing with at this hour. You're going to see a lot of red out there. You can see that through past the River Road and again into Cabin John. So if you're heading from Maryland into Virginia, that is going to be tricky right before the American Legion Bridge. Happening today, another round of drug-free zones are going to start in D.C. this morning. The new zones are in northeast and northwest. This follows the first round that wrapped up yesterday. Our Candace Cole is live this morning in northwest with more on all of this. Candace, good morning. Good morning. We're here in the 4,000 block of Kansas Avenue Northwest, one of four areas here in the quadrant that will be declared a drug free zone in about two hours. I'll step out of the way here so you can see the notice that's been posted for the neighborhood. Now that again, it'll go into effect at 8 a.m. today until 7:59 a.m. Monday, March 25th. Drug free zones have also been declared in parts of Upshur Street, Georgia Avenue and Shepherd Street Northwest and in the 5th District over in Northeast drug free zones have been set up on Mount Olivet Road, Montello Avenue, Trinidad Avenue and Rom Street. As we reported, DC's drug free zones came out of the Secure DC Act, that sweeping crime legislation that passed last week. It enables police to declare any area a drug free zone for up to five days at a time with 24 hours notice and aims to stop illegal drug transactions and loitering. Anyone who refuses to disperse while in a drug-free zone after being asked to do so by police will face arrest and a fine of up to $300. As the law stipulates, D.C.'s police chief should consider factors such as the number of drug-related arrests and incidents of violent crime before declaring an area as a drug-free zone. And D.C. residents, along with the ACLU, have all raised concerns over the establishment of drug-free zones unfairly and disproportionately targeting communities of color here in D.C. And as you might remember, back in 2014, the D.C. City Council voted to repeal uh, the use of drug-free zones over concerns that they might be unconstitutional. Reporting live in Northwest, Candace Cole, D.C. News Now. Thank you, Candace. Developing now, police in Alexandria say they have a homicide suspect in custody. Officials say neighbors near Madison Street and Rivergate Place no longer need to remain indoors. Now, Alexandria police say they were searching for a murder suspect after midnight and were asking people to stay inside with their doors locked. Around 2 a.m., that request was lifted. Right now, no additional details about the person accused of murder is being released. In the district, police releasing new information on Sunday's mass shooting in Shaw. Seven people were shot. Two of them died. Now, D.C. police are looking for this black infinity. Take a look at your screen. They say it's a vehicle of interest in their investigation. The shooting happened near the intersections of 7th and P Streets in Northwest. 
If you know anything about the car or possible shooters, you're asked to call D.C. police. Meantime, neighbors who live in Shaw came together to express safety concerns last night. For some, they were frustrated. Play D.C. restaurant and lounge is not doing what it agreed to do back in January. That's allegedly keeping the noise down and paying two off-duty officers to patrol the area after closing. However, D.C. police tell us it's difficult with short staffing. Have to find officers willing to work their 10 hour shift and whatever overtime we make them work and then get off that and go work that. If I have to be out there myself because they we're that short, I'll be out there at 3 o'clock in the morning in front of plate. Yeah, yeah. After the meeting, neighbors say they are hopeful things will change. In Maryland, Frederick County is hosting a public meeting tonight on the newly proposed budget plan. Now, County Executive Jessica Fitzwater introduced the proposal Monday. The budget plan includes over $84 million in requests for funding. County public schools make up the majority of the budget requests, with FCPS requesting an additional $63 million. Of the departments seeking the most funding are emergency services like police and fire. Tonight's meeting starts at 7 o'clock at Winchester Hall on East Church Street. Your time right now is 6.05 this morning. Prince George's County rolling out a new health initiative starting today. It's called Meat Out Day. The day is meant to encourage people to eat more plant-based products. While the Meat Out movement started back in 1985, this is the first time Prince George's County will officially celebrate it. Yesterday, County Council members got an early taste of Meat Out Day. They were treated to a plant-based meal from the restaurant New Vegan. It does raise your awareness of what's good for you, what's good for animals, what's good for the environment. Just give it a try. You know, you never know until you try. A lot of people scared because they just don't know. Try your local um, vegan restaurants. Um, go into the grocery store that have vegan options. And if you just undecided, just, just ask for samples and try it. You might like it. The County Health Department says eating more plant-based meals have several health benefits. Well, today's the first day of the Cherry Blossom Festival. Yeah, the four-week festival celebrates the cherry trees and the start of spring in the DMV. Now, the festival's first event is the Pup Swim at the D.C. Convention Center. It begins Friday afternoon at 5.30. The next day is the opening ceremony at the Warner Theater. That will start at 5 p.m. Now, you will need tickets for the ceremony. Also on Saturday is the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Museum celebration on F Street. That is Saturday morning at 1130. The following Saturday is the Kite Festival on the Washington Monument grounds. Happening this morning, the public is getting the first look at Metro's all new, all digital rail cars. Yeah, it's the first time Metro has arranged for the public to see a sample of its newest trains on the National Mall since the first 1000 series train cars. DC News Down Sosa Kile is live this morning at the mall getting a sneak peek. And Tosin, what can you tell us about the trains? Well, Corey, all aboard because I'm going to give you an inside look of what this mock, uh, this rail cars are going to look like. What you're seeing right now is the life size mock up of these actual new 8000 series rail cars. What do they look like on the inside? Well, join me inside. This is what it looks like. It is so beautiful. A lot more space. It is the first thing you notice a lot more space in here. The other thing you notice, I'm going to tell photographer John Philly to swing this way. Open gangways. You see, you can go between rail cars. This is something new from Metro. On the other side of this is Lynn. She's SVP of Rail Transformation. Good morning. I'm, good morning. It's so nice to meet you. I'm guessing you had such a major role or set major say so in getting us to this point of these new rail cars. We've been working on this for years with our customers and our customers have really told us the features and amenities that they were looking for in the car. And one of those features besides a lot more space is how digital everything is. So fill me in on what that looks like. We can walk and talk if you want to point Absolutely. it out. So 33 digital displays per car, okay. all electronic, uh, no more paper. So you'll have electronic maps and new displays like this that show you station ahead, time and temperature, other in, in, uh, information that you'll need on the system, uh, video and breaking news crawlers here, everything that you might need. Um, we also have uh, this new uh, stanchion, which you'll see uh, for people who uh, go to Paris or going to the Olympics this summer, you see these at the Metro in Paris. This allows people to hold on from every side and not have to reach up, especially if you can't reach that, which some of our customers said, not tall enough, can't reach, can I have something here? So mostly digital, mostly tech, but also some just common sense features that our customers wanted us to borrow from global cities. I love that, Lynn. And really quickly, I know Randy Clark said yesterday, safety and comfort was major for um, passengers. Talk a little bit about that. 
So the safety, really that open gangway, the ability to go back and forth between trains, we now serve two airports. People have luggage, people have strollers, people use wheelchairs. That's a major improvement. And now the world standards there uh, in Europe and in Asia to have those open gangways. So that's a huge jump from where we've been in our fleet. Awesome, Lynn. Thank you. And speaking of space for wheelchair and luggage, we're going to show you a little bit of that. This is a sample of that space that she was talking about, designated space for those in wheelchair. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll show you more of what this uh, mock-up train looks like and what you can expect once those 8,000 series rail cars roll out. But for now, we're live at the National Mall. I'm Tosin Fakile. I'll send it back to you. All right, Tosin, thank you. And the fleet of the future is not the only change. Coming to Metro. Well, let's turn things over now to Shanika for a look at what's coming this summer. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Corey and Tanaya. In the coming months, Metro <laughs> is set to close five stations on the red line. So this is expected to happen in early June. The stations are scheduled to reopen in early September. So Glenmont. Uh, Wheaton, uh, Forest Glen, Silver Spring, and Tacoma stations will all be impacted. And Metro says the extended closures will give the Maryland Transit Administration time to build a new mezzanine for the Purple Line project. This means commuters will have easier access to transfer between the red and purple line. The closures will also allow Metro crews to make upgrades to the red line. In the meantime, the Montgomery County Council is calling on Metro and the Maryland Department of Transportation to make improvements to the transit its systems. Council members are asking this to be done to ease the burden of the red line closures. The request include delaying service cuts on the MTA commuter buses and increasing mark train service between Rockville and Union Station and reducing fares on other transit services.